all of these feed into the Rio Paraná, right? These big chunky boys like this guy. Look at him. You can imagine what's swimming around down there. They obviously are dedicated to education and conservation here. The aquarium of Rosario. Just hanging out with this dude. He's chilling. He wants to get up here on the rock, make that perfect pose. You look good, buddy. Wiggly little guys. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Look, if there's science equipment and lab coats, you're doing important stuff in there then. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Rosario, Argentina. We're out today. Kind of cold, a little windy today, right here by the Rio Paraná, the Paraná River. But it's okay because today we're actually going to be going inside somewhere. This right here is the aquarium of Rosario. And inside, I am told, there's a lot of fish. Fish from the river back there, the Rio Paraná. They do a lot of conservation efforts here at the aquarium and uh, we can go in and see the fish. So I think today that is what we are gonna do. So if you wanna come see some cool fish native to the river Paraná here in Rosario, well, you know what to do, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, so we're inside. It cost 4,000 pesos for foreigners to come in. I think for residents of Santa Fe, it's free. And right in here, in the main, like, entryway, you can see they've got all kinds of science going on. Like, I don't know, fish hatchery situation, laboratory situation. And what I've noticed is it, the lighting in here is actually kind of dim. All the uh, windows that lead to the outside are all tinted. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that's probably because they try to keep an environment for the fish, which are actually up on the third floor. But they try to keep like a, a calm and tranquil environment. Not too many bright lights, not a lot of loud noises and things like that, which is very cool. Like I said in our video that we made in Buenos Aires about the Eco Parque, um, I don't, uh, I don't really like zoos very much, but I am down when an organization is trying to do like conservation work and when they're doing their best to treat the animals like really well. So anyway, we've got a couple of model fish here, fake fish. All right, let's go upstairs. Let's get this started. We'll go upstairs and we'll check out what fish they have here. All right, we're up here, top floor, and there's some fish up here. Now, not only are there fish, but over here, I noticed a little room, Coordinación Educativa, education. And actually, right outside, when we arrived, there was a whole group of like school kids here. And I think that they do a lot of like education programs here with school kids. On their website, they showed specific uh, days for institutional visits and like a specific procedure for institutional visits, like bringing, you know, school, like your class, right, from your school. That's very cool. All right, let's see what we have over here. Now, all of these fish that they have in here I think are all like native to the Paraná River, the Rio Paraná. I don't know what types of fish these are. Maybe we'll see a sign. Now I know there's also a guided tour you can take. Um, it would of course be in Spanish. 
and I wouldn't understand all of it because though my Spanish is getting better, it's still not great. Look at this guy hanging around. Oh, yo, that's crazy. Can you see that? He's like digging around in the uh, in the silt in the soil and eating whatnot, but like <laughs> the leftovers, the little pieces, the little flecks of dirt and sand and whatnot and silt come out of his gills. Super cool. Some sort of eel. Some other fish around here. We're gonna try and be quiet. Don't wanna be loud. Um, Cause I don't imagine that the fish enjoy loud noises so hopefully you can hear me because I am talking kind of quietly and there's a little bit of background noise from the, uh, the like waterfall feature back here this is really cool though it, it is like open on the top so you can see it looks sort of like the surface of the river and of course the part of my river is super wide right but over at the edges by the shore where there's lots of like you know driftwood and plants and stuff that's where these guys would live I would imagine look at these dudes these guys look super prehistoric look at them crazy oh look at this guy what's up whisker man little whisker guy right there doing his laps this morning workout. Here's the rest of his crew right there. What's up, Whiskers? Oh, oh, did you see that? We caught a little shot of little suckerfish, suckerfish mouth there. Oh, here's where here's where the whole crew is hanging out over here. Yeah, like down in here, amongst the. Uh, amongst the, the plants. That's where all the fish are living. Oh, look at this guy right here. You see him? Very, very cool looking with the stripes. It's very cool. So this is, I guess, would be like shallow, right? The fish that live in the shallows. Because, of course, this water here, you can see how shallow it is. And then some of these other tanks... These are like deeper, right? So I guess these are the kinds of fish that would live in like slightly deeper water, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, see, look right up here they have signs. Laguna, so lagoon fish that live in little shallow lagoons. And then over here, Costa Baja, low coast. They have all the fish separated into like the different, um, I guess, like biomes that there would be within the river itself, little mini biomes, which is so cool. Look at this guy. And there's some more uh, little whisker fish here, some sort of catfish. Hello, friend. This guy, right here. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Here's another prehistoric looking guy. Look at this guy. It's just like a bigger version of those, uh, those ones that were over there in the, the lagoon fish. I wonder if it is, I wonder if it's a, a com uh, like a different, you know, breed or uh, like species with similar, similar type, or if these are like older, right? Like maybe when they're young, they live in the lagoon. And then as they get older, they venture out into deeper waters. I'm not sure. I don't know exactly how many views this video is gonna get, but if we get a decent amount, and there are some fish experts 
down there in the comments. Let me know. Let me know about uh, our uh, prehistoric looking friend back there. Oop, getting in my shot, bro. Very cool. Very, very cool. Look at these guys. All right, what do we have here? This is... Cauce Central, the central channel. So I guess this would be like out in the middle, in the middle of the river. Deeper, of course. But out in the middle, because the, the Rio Paraná, as we've seen, is a very wide river. Showed off the Rio Paraná a little bit in our video about the flag monument, which is right down there by the river. And it's a very wide river. I mean, very wide. It's a major uh, river for like ship shipping, navigation. You see ships. In fact, like right out there at the beginning of the video, we saw a ship out there. They ship cargo, agricultural products, all kinds of stuff out of um, Rosario. Because Rosario is a major, um, uh, major like industrial hub and agricultural hub in Argentina. But not just things shipping in and out of Rosario. There are things that ship from, um, you know, like Buenos Aires or from beyond, right? So the international shipping will actually come up the river all the way up to like Santa Fe and Paraná, further up the river. Look at this guy. This guy looking a little, looking a little damaged. Looks like he's got a little, a couple little scars or something. That guy up there too. Missing a tail piece, piece of his tail. See so, you now. I think what you may have here is, uh, and what I would imagine from what seems like the work that they do here is conservation. So some of these fish may be injured um, and then can't either can't be released back into the wild because of their injuries, or perhaps they're just here, like doing rehabilitation, and they're eventually going to be released back out. You know, perhaps they're they're too old now to be released. That was the situation when we visited the Eco Parque in Buenos Aires. They had some animals there that were like too old or possibly injured or sick that couldn't be released or couldn't be like um, moved to a different um, conservation center or, or other other facility somewhere else. There's another one of our guys right there. Those prehistoric looking. Damn, what kind of fish is that? Now I'm, now I'm curious. I'm very curious what kind of fish this is. This ancient looking fish. Because we've seen him in all three tanks now. We're moving on to the Costa Alta. Costa Alta, the high coast. And creeks. Now, of course, you know, the Rio Paraná, since it's such a major river, it's fed by, you know, all kinds of tributaries, all the little creeks and, uh, and tributaries and whatnot, they all flow into Rio Paraná. Look at these little guys. Wiggly little guys. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. I imagine they're like, are they eating stuff off the glass? Or they're trying to figure out why they can't swim this way? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> We're done wiggling. Of course, the fish here, you know, in the, the high, what is this? Yeah, the high coast. All the, the coastal fish, basically, that stick closer to the uh, to the coast, they all seem a little bit smaller. Didn't get like these big old boys like we had in the central channel. These big chunky boys like this guy. Look at him. Look how big he is. They're big and slow. Like Polly from Goodfellas. 
They need to move very fast because they don't have to move for anyone. Look at that, right back there on the rock, you see it? It's another one of these prehistoric bottom feeder types. Look at that guy. I guess these guys are just everywhere. That's, that's what I'm learning. There are different types of fish that are in the low coast, the high coast, the central channel. And then, there's that guy. He's just there. He's there all the time. Here's another one right here. Those guys are everywhere. We're gonna name them the official, the official fish of Rio Paraná. We can find out what kind of fish it is. Either that or we can just give it our name ourselves. What does he look like? What would you name that fish? Let me know down in the comments. If you were to give that fish back there, the one on the rock, the prehistoric looking bottom feeder type fish, and you were to give him a name. What would you name him? Now there's some cool round cylindrical tanks back here. These are the real big boys. This I would imagine is when you get out into the deepest part of the river and we have full grown full grown big boys. Look at this guy. He's a big boy. And look, 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 right there. Right there in the middle. Man, gotta get out of the way, big boy. Right there in the middle, there's our boy right there. Our prehistoric boy. They're everywhere, I tell you. Some sort of sturgeon, maybe, that guy. Looks very much like a like a sturgeon. Yeah, this is a quite deep um, tank that they have here, right? Like this is at my eye level. I'm tall, over six feet. Quite deep, floor to ceiling tank. See over here. Okay, now. The group of uh, students that I mentioned, that, we, that I saw out in front, they have made their way now up to the top floor here in the aquarium. And uh, they're hanging out over by the educational center area, which, I don't know, maybe they're gonna go into the little education room first, which would give us a little more time to film here. Uh, but I know this from experience. When a whole group of little kids shows up at whatever museum you're at, you have very, very limited time to film because they're going to be like going crazy and super loud in here. I think we'll have a little bit of time. It looks like, actually, it looks like they're being they're being guided on a guided tour. So as long as we can stay ahead of the tour, we should be fine. Look at this guy with the little polka dots. So cool. More of our sturgeon looking friends in here. <clears throat> what, uh, what are we here? We're in the, ah, Mad, Madrejon, dry riverbed. So I guess this is, uh, well, it doesn't look very dry to me, I will say that, but I guess maybe this is areas that do dry out when the, uh, when the water goes down far enough. These little guys down here, look at them. See that? Here is the Banyado, the marsh. 
marshlands. All right, so in the marsh, we have, oh, we have the same, see, they're everywhere. These little sucker fish, prehistoric sort of guy. Oh, look, he's getting loose. He heard me talking about him. He's like, he wants to come over here for his, for his close up. Oh, now he's taking off. We have some different types of fish here in the marshland, it looks like. These, these guys right here, um, like those three back there, the big ones, they look different. They have a different shaped head, a little more rounded. This guy is super active. Right when I came in and started talking about him and filming him, he's like posing. He wants to get up here on the rock, make that perfect pose. You look good, buddy. Looking good. Oh, I think I may have frightened him. A little quick movement out here, and they they skittered away. Oh, now look at these guys. We've seen some, you know, like catfish, different places, right? We've seen some catfish in different places, but look at these guys. They're huge. That's a big fish. That is a, is a large catfish. And, uh, oh, here's one swimming around here. Let's see. See him? Wait, hold on. There he is. Now, this is a cool tank. They have this anchor in the middle, right? Because, uh, like I said, of course, Rio Paraná is a major shipping channel, so I'm sure there's all kinds of, like, old wrecked ships and parts of ships. Maybe not, like, a whole wrecked ship, but, I mean, there must be, right? Like, the, people have been sailing up and down that river for centuries. There's got to be some wreckage at the bottom of it. And once it gets to the bottom, these fish take over. And they make it, they make it theirs, right? They hang out in here. There's another one of our little sucker fish. All right, I am very curious. I am very curious as to what kind of fish that is, but I'm not gonna look it up because I want people to guess down in the comments. Guess what kind of fish that is. Or if you know what kind of fish it is, tell us what kind of fish it is. All right, let's see. We're getting towards the end here, the end of the Aquarium. Here is Barranca, the slope. Just a few guys in here, a few fish. Oh, look at this guy. Wait, where's he going? Come back. Guy with his spots. That. Oh, there's another one right here. It's a very pretty looking fish. Oh, these, look at the tails. Look at this, look at this marking on this guy on his tail. He's got that like little black marking here too. On the tail. Super cool. I think we actually saw these same fish though, or similar, over in like the second tank that we saw. Right? The uh, low coast. I would imagine there's a lot of crossover between these uh, different biomes, right? Low coast, high coast. Slope. Yeah, looks like they have a little picture of what it, the area is like. All right, here we go. This is the final, the final grand tank with the biggest boys. And here there's some like a little wrecked boat down at the bottom. Which, like I said, oh, this guy's fast. Look at him go. Like I said, I would imagine there's pieces of boats and stuff that have wrecked. They're now down at the bottom of the Paraná River. Here's our poly fish over here.
Oh, these two chasing each other around. And do we have our, one of our... Oh, look at these. These are like rays. That's cool. We haven't seen any of those yet. Any rays? There's another one over here. Sort of... Yo. Now, rays are super cool. Look at that. It's such a cool, just strange kind of a creature, right? There's some more back in there. Just crazy. Look at them. Rays are cool. Rays are cool because of the way, like, the way they move themselves through the water is very interesting to me. Like, look at this guy. Look at how he... Right? Very different from a fish, of course. It's just cool to think about, like, how different creatures have evolved, right? You know, fish evolved to move through the water one way. Rays evolved to move through water another way. And then, of course, like, mammals that swim in the water a completely different way. Dude, he's chilling. Very cool. Very, very cool. I think it's time. I'm gonna loop her back around here and see. I think we've seen. We've seen all the fish here at the aquarium. They um, they obviously are dedicated to education and conservation here, right? Conservation. We saw down on the first floor all those uh, all those tanks where they were. I think it was like a hatchery, the laboratory, and everything. And then having school groups come through here, education and conservation. That's very important. It's one thing to do conservation efforts. It's another thing to do education efforts. But to do both and to show, like, look, this is the work that we're doing here and, like, teach kids about how important it is. I think that's cool. I think that's very cool. All right, well, I think we've seen everything. Let's head back down back outside. I think there may be a few things to see outside, not sure, but we're going to go and uh, and see if there are. Can take a quick look here at the laboratory. No scientists in here right now. They're actually all eating lunch. It's lunchtime. But right here, Universidad Nacional de Rosario. Whatever they're doing, they're doing a lot of important sciencey stuff in here, right? You can see all the science equipment and lab coats. Look, if there's science equipment and lab coats, you're doing important stuff in there then. Oh, here we have a river. A river map. The Rio Paraná. Yeah, so here's where we are. Here's Buenos Aires. There's the estuary. And there's the river, and it runs up to right here where uh where it's right around here i think where it splits off that's where santa fe is santa fe which is the uh the capital of the santa fe province but it continues all the way like look at this it, it runs i think it runs this way right and then it feeds out into the estuary so all of these feed into the rio paraná right from Brazil, Rio Grande, Rio Paranaíba, Rio Dieche, Dieche, Rio Para Paranapanema, Paranapanema. Now, of course, these are all Portuguese, and uh, my Portuguese is not good. I actually have started recently, very recently, learning Portuguese, and uh, I'm not good. <laughs> I'll tell you, 
If you think my Spanish is bad, you should hear my Portuguese. Here's a close-up of the uh, Rio Paraná. There's us right there. And even here you can see all these different uh, tributaries and streams and whatnot that feed into it. Looks like there's a canal. This is obviously man-made, right? An access canal that I would imagine runs over into... Well, it definitely runs into Entre Rios province because this is all Entre Rios province. But maybe it runs out into... I mean, who knows? Does it eventually run out into like Uruguay and and um, and Brazil? It would be like right about here. If it kept going, it would run into Uruguay. Maybe out into Brazil. Who knows? All right, let's head back outside. So out here, just outside the aquarium building, like. Uh, like right here that's where we were inside the aquarium right and uh, one thing I did notice there is a like a little cafe here with a little deck on the second uh, second floor where you can go out and eat probably on nicer days than today and there is this whole system of like water reclamation that they have here that I think is actually connected to the river there's a sign here that says Sistema, per Periment me Sistema Perimetral a system uh, open. Oh, here we go. We're gonna have to try and read Spanish, guys. We're gonna we're gonna do our best. It looks like it's like an open system that receives uh, water for the experimentation tanks and the extraction of subterranean water. The function is to oh to like load organic. Uh, like residue into the water sedimentation uh, and mediante la acción mediate the action of microorganisms is that I don't know mediante to do something with the action of microorganisms and plants aquatic plants that utilize the organic and inorganic nutrients uh, for the cycle of life Basically, I think, I think what it is, is there is a, uh, a way that they can like cycle water from the river into here and use the water like here in these tanks for experimentation and to basically to create the, uh, the natural environment inside in the tanks that they need in order to maintain all the uh, the fish and the different species that they have in there. Anyway, we're back out here in the park, and this park is actually really nice. It goes up to the street there, but also runs down towards the river. And I would imagine on a day with nicer weather, right? A sunny, warm, maybe spring day here is a lovely, lovely place to walk along the river. I mean, you can do it now, of course, but uh, it is a little chilly, a little chilly and cloudy today. Still, I think this is a good place to end the video right where we started, right out in the park, right out in front of the aquarium. And uh, I really enjoyed that, honestly. Like I said, not a big fan of zoos, uh, but I am a big fan of institutions that are like about conservation and science, which this place really seems like it is. Conservation, science, education, very cool. All good in my book. And it was very cool to see all those fish in there that are native to the river. So now every time we come out here and we look at the Rio Paraná, we can imagine underneath the surface, sort of by the shore, out in the central channel. You can imagine what's swimming around down there. Well, we don't have to imagine, we know. We know what's swimming around down there because we've seen them in the aquarium here in Rosario. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. There's gonna be more videos coming from here in Rosario, more videos from Argentina. 
And uh, that's going to be it. We'll see you in the next one.